Welcome back to another episode of Laser Sports Update. My name is Zach Aware and I'm here to host my first episode. Each spring team is now well into their season, so I will break down each one as they look to climb their way to the top of the Great Northeast Athletic Conference standings. After coming back from their Florida trip, the softball team headed to Worcester State on March 22nd and split the doubleheader. After losing the first game 3-2, the Lasers came back and put up seven runs in the second game to beat the Lancers 7-2. Sophomore Katie Hopkins led the Lasers going 3 for 4 with two doubles, two runs, and an RBI, while first year Megan Theall went 2 for 2 at the plate and earned her first collegiate victory on the mound. The team then came home to face UMaine Farmington on March 26th, their first home games of the season. LaSalle went on to win the first game by a score of 6 to 5 behind a walk off single from Emily Mestis. Katie Hopkins and Matara Tamzarian each contributed home runs in the second game, which led to a 3 to 1 win. Their next game will be on Thursday at Salem State University at 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. The team kicks off conference play with a home doubleheader against Johnson & Wales on Saturday before heading on the road to St. Joseph's of Connecticut on Sunday. Our Taylor Viles was able to sit down with softball's Kelsey Scanavan to discuss her role on the softball team and her passion, competitive lifting. Working out is a routine that many strive to turn into a lifestyle. Some succeed, others can't keep up the motivation, and a crazy few attempt to become professional lifters. Well, this last category may be weak on the people who actually choose it, but those who do belong to it sure aren't. Weak, that is. This is Kelsey Scanavan. She's the senior captain of the LaSalle University softball team, but when she's not on the diamond, she's in the gym, powerlifting, working to break even more records. I competed through the RPS Federation, which is one of the biggest federations in the world. Um, I hold 10 world records there. I was until about a couple weeks ago, I was a top ranked lifter in my age and weight class in the country. Scanavan discovered powerlifting only six years ago and it quickly turned into her passion and her future. I've known actually, ironically, from the second I broke my first powerlifting record, uh, when I was 17, I was like, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to help people. Like, whether it's powerlifting or not, like, I want to empower people because fitness is such a healthy, like, coping mechanism. She said she loves proving people wrong and it's in fact one of the reasons she began powerlifting in the first place. It's the coolest thing. I step in a gym and people are like, okay, what can she do? And then they're like, oh crap, all right, all right. <laughs> it's true. At only 5 feet 0 inches and 121 pounds, Scanavan doesn't come across as your average power lifter, but her stats can rival people much larger. I can deadlift 345. Um, my goal is three times my body weight uh, within the next few months. Powerlifting has given Scanavan confidence in herself and shown her a purpose for her life, something that she hopes can continue for a very long time. Lifting is the one thing that like makes me feel proud of something. And like being able to like coach people and like share that kind of confidence with them is awesome. So long story short, heck yeah. <laughs> I'm in this for the long run. I want to be that grandma, that like 90 year old that steps on the platform and just like smashes weights. Although powerlifting continues to be a driving force for Scanavan, her love of softball has not diminished ever since she was a little kid throwing around the ball in the backyard with her dad. Being with my team, playing the sport that I love, like it's just, just being on the field just gives me an awesome feeling. She even gave up a huge powerlifting event just to spend the weekend playing in a scrimmage with her team, but she didn't get any game time. This is something Scanavan has struggled with throughout college, but she also understands her role on the team. I think there's two ways you can handle it. You can sit there and complain about not playing and not do anything about it, or you can work at what you're weak at and get better. And like, I'm not giving up. I'm gonna do everything it takes to get out there. I just think keeping everybody in the right headspace, keeping everybody motivated. Um, what I do a lot of is like, I pull people aside and I talk to them. I make sure everybody's feeling okay. In terms of her powerlifting dreams, Scanavan is ready to continue her passion past college, but already considers herself a professional. I am a nationally ranked lifter. In the most humble way possible, I'm saying this, but I would like to think I'm past the amateur stage. Scanavan made a point to mention that if you do want to follow in her footsteps, know that powerlifting is a full-time job. She says she wakes up between 4 and 7 every morning to lift for one and a half to two hours before heading off to softball practice. I, on the other hand, will stick to reporting. For LCTV, I'm Taylor Viles. The baseball team took both games of a GNAC doubleheader with Albertus Magnus Sunday afternoon at Victory Field. LaSalle won the first game 8-3. 
The game was a pitcher's duel for the first two and a half innings before the Lasers broke through in the bottom half of the third. Senior Matt Bischoff brought home the first run of the game when he singled home sophomore C.J. Mills. The next batter was freshman Tyler Deneza, and he slapped a double into the left field gap to bring in two more runs. Freshman Griffin Fer Ferreira kept the scoring going as he blasted a two RBI ground rule double over the right fielder's head. The Lasers scored once more in the sixth inning, giving the Lasers an 8-2 lead going into the final frame. Freshman Matthew Fletcher got his first collegiate win going five innings, allowing two runs and striking out eight. The other game was a 12-11 win to complete the sweep. Sophomore Brian Bauman tallied two hits, three runs scored, and four runs batted in to lead the Lasers. The Lasers faced an early deficit, but answered in a big way in the bottom half of the third. First on a single over the first baseman by Vaughn Larissa to bring home odds at. With the bases loaded and two outs, Bauman delivered with a bases clearing triple to give the Lasers a 4-2 lead after three. A couple more lead changes ensued before the Lasers finally gave themselves a three-run cushion going into the final inning. Mills got the start for LaSalle going four and a third innings while striking out three. Larissa got the win on the mound in relief, throwing an inning in two-thirds while striking out two. The Lasers will be back in action after this filming on Tuesday, March 29th, when they play host to Elms College for their first GNAC matchup. The up-and-down season has continued for the women's lacrosse team, as their offense is still going strong, but the defense is struggling heavily. The team lost a pair of games to the University of New England, and Simmons being outscored 37-17 in the process. In those losses, Sophia Gadsden recorded a hat trick in both, continuing her hot play while her dynamic duo, Sydney Brady, had five goals herself. Blazers will look to get back in the win column this Tuesday, as they are set to match up with St. Joe's Maine. That starts after this filming. The men's lacrosse team has been on a tear lately. With four straight wins following the five straight losses to open the season, the team is firing on all cylinders. The team's most recent victim was Riviere, when the team traveled to New Hampshire for a low-scoring victory. All that was needed was two goals in the first three frames and one more in the fourth to secure the 7-6 victory. The game winner was scored with 3.05 on the clock by Jordan Hines. Hines also chipped in with three assists while Landon Reyes scored three goals. The Lasers sit at the top of the GNAC with a 3-0 conference record as of Tuesday. Following this filming, the team plays Albertus Magnus on Wednesday before returning to LaSalle to face off against Emmanuel this Saturday. The game will start at 1. Sweeping both Emerson and Kobe Sawyer last week, the men's volleyball team maintained that momentum going into the tri-match this past Sunday, taking down both Dean and Riviere and moving back up to number 2 in the GNAC. In the 3-0 win against Dean College, the team celebrated their graduating players Dylan D'Souza and Brandon Hapgood, seeing them take the court as starters and contribute both in kills and aces. However, it was junior Riley Grenier that shined in this match with 10 kills and 3 service aces hitting 438 overall. The Riviera match, however, was a different story. Taking a full 5 sets before going in favor of the Lasers, it was a battle of who can make the least amount of errors, and the Raiders had 46 hitting errors, almost double that of the Lasers, leading to their defeat. Both Brendan Joyce and Jordan Chenot were the kill leaders of the match with 17 kills apiece. All that the hands of Jesus Garcia, who had 37 assists. They will play Eastern Nazarene here at home following this filming and will close up conference play on the road against Regis on Thursday and Colby Sawyer and Emmanuel on Saturday, hopefully to improve their conference record to 14-2 as they head in, into the playoffs. Now for our three stars of the week. After a 5-for-9 showing at the plate this weekend, Matara Tamzarian, our third star, was a key contributor to LaSalle Softball's two wins over UMaine Farmington. Tamzarian capped off her stellar weekend with a home run in the second game of the doubleheader. Tamzarian's average went from 206 to 306 in just two games, as she looks to solidify herself as one of the better hitters in the GNAC. After recording 17 kills and a 3-2 comeback win over Riviere Sunday afternoon in the Athletic Center, our second star, freshman Jordan Chenot of the LaSalle University men's volleyball team, earned his sixth consecutive Great Northeast Athletic Conference Rookie of the Week award Monday. In the victory over Riviere, Chenot tallied five block assists and six total blocks for the Lasers. The win moved the Lasers into the second slot in the conference standings, in first place as number 10 ranked Wentworth. Finally, after compiling three goals and two assists during a 15-8 triumph over Dean Wednesday at Grelier Field, freshman attack Ryan Stone of the men's lacrosse team, our first star of the week, was named Great Northeast Athletic Conference Rookie of the Week. This marks the first weekly conference honor of Stone's laser career. In the win over the Bulldogs, he also tallied three ground balls and one cause turnover while posting a career-high five points. Stone has posted 13 goals and seven assists in nine games this season for LaSalle. That's it for this episode of Laser Sports Update. 
Thanks for tuning in and check back here next week for another episode. I'm Zach Loire and go Lasers.